Hey folks, in today's video, I want to show you how you can use Next.js to upload documents to Google Cloud Storage using signed URLs. In my last video, I showed how to upload files using server actions and API routes, and signed URLs is another good option, especially if you are doing very large files. And the cool thing about signed URLs is think of them as a token with embedded permissions in them so that the user can upload the file, even though the user may not have permissions to write to that bucket. Signed URLs can be used to either upload or download objects into your storage bucket. In this case, we're going to use upload. I'll put a link to this in the description down below, but this is the documentation from Google on how to do this, and this is the code we're going to basically be using. And a quick overview before we start implementing this into our code is you create some options. We're going to use version four. The action is going to be right because we're uploading this document. Expires is a property that tells you how long this URL is going to be good for. Since this signed URL is essentially a key that gives the user permissions to upload this file into your cloud storage, you don't want this to last forever. So generally you leave it only for a little bit of time. In this case, they're doing 15 minutes. And then we add in the content type. And then you use the client library from Google to provide the bucket, the file name, and then the options to get that signed URL. And then that URL can be returned back to the user, or in this case, back to our application. And then we can upload that file from there. This is the form we're going to use. This is the same form that I used in my previous video. The form only has one input, which is the file, and it has a name of file, and then we have a button to submit our form. What we want to do now is we want to submit the form, we want to go get that signed URL, and then use the signed URL to actually upload our object. So the first step is getting the signed URL. I'm going to use a server action for that because I think it's the easiest way to do it. I already have a file for server actions in my lib folder. But I want to create a new method that's going to get the signed URL for us. So I'm going to export a new method called get signed URL, and it's only going to accept the file name. And then we're going to create a new storage object, which is coming from Google's client library. If you don't have that installed, you need to do an npm install for this dependency right here. And I've already done this, but that is just npm install and then at google cloud slash storage. We will have to add some extra things into this storage for permissions, like I mentioned earlier, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Now we're just going to get the signed URL like they showed in the documentation. And to do that, we call await on the storage.bucket and then we give it the bucket name. We give it the file name here. And then we call get signed URL and we pass in those options. Again, I'm using the same options they had in the documentation. There are other options in here if you wanna to go to the documents and look at that. And then lastly, we'll just go ahead and return that URL. Now let's go back to our page. Let's call this to get our signed URL and then use that to upload our object. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a new method that's going to handle the submit action of our form. And then from there, we're going to call that get signed URL method. And then we're going to upload the object. Here's that handle submit method. And it's going to accept our form from down here. So let's go ahead and call that. So we'll say on submit, and we're just gonna say handle submit. And now we need to get the file from the form, get the file name, and then use that file name to call get signed URL. So I'm gonna create a form data object by calling event.currentTarget to get the form and then pass that into a new form data. And then I'm going to get that file object from data.get with the name of file. And this file matches the name of the file input down here. And now we can go get our URL. So we'll say await get signed URL and I'll go ahead and import that from our actions. And then this will be file.name. And assuming that this is working correctly, this is going to give us back a URL. And so just to test that, I'm just gonna go ahead and say console.log and I'll tell it to log out that URL. And now we can go test this. However, I do know this is gonna fail because we need to add some extra permissions to this. In order for this to work, we need to add in a service account in Google Cloud, and then we need to create a key for that service account and then use that key to call our get signed URL in our server action. And this is just a limitation from Google that basically says, if you're gonna create signed URLs, you have to use a service account to do it. At least that's the way that I understand it. And to do that, we're going to go into Google Cloud and we're going to go to IAM, which is Identity and Access Management, and we're going to create a new service account. So I'm gonna to go to service account and then create service account and give it a name. I'll call it storage demo user and then create and continue. And then we need to give it a role. And in our case, this service account is going to be used to create those signed URLs. So it has to have the permissions to do that. Normally Google's documentation tells you what the best role to use for this is. For some reason for this one, it doesn't. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it the storage admin role and then continue and then done. And now we have a storage account on our project that has permissions to create signed URLs. The next thing to do is to create a key for this service account. And then we're going to use that key in our application to create this signed URL. So if you click on the service account and then go over to keys, you can add a new key. I'm gonna go ahead and say create new leave the type as JSON, click create, 
then it'll ask you to download this key. Make sure you save this somewhere where you can keep track of it. You can only download this key once. If you lose it, you'll have to recreate a new key. So I'm just gonna call it storage demo key and I'll go ahead and save that. Now we want to add that JSON key into our project. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down into here. Now that that file is in our project, we can reference that when we want to use it to create signed URLs. What we do now is we go back into our server action and when we create this new storage object, we want to tell it to use that key so that it has the permissions of that service account. And they have a really simple way of doing that. So in this storage, we pass in a new object and we just say key file name. And then you give it the name of the key in your project. So storage demo key.json. And now when you use this storage object, it's going to use that service account's permissions. If you're not comfortable with including the JSON key in your project, there is other ways of doing it. I believe you can use environment variables and things like that. So if this way doesn't work for you, go check the documentation and look for alternatives. But for this demo, this is the easiest way for me to do this. Now let's go test this and see if this is going to create that URL for us. I will go into my signed URL. Uh-oh. I forgot one thing, and since we are using the onSubmit method of our form, we have to use a client component for this. So in your page, just add use client at the top of it. Now we can go try to run this again. So I'm on the upload signed URL page. I'm gonna go ahead, select my file, and I'll open up my developer tools here and I'll click upload. What happened? That didn't actually work. One thing I forgot is in this handle submit, you wanna make sure that you do a prevent default because it was trying to submit the form, which isn't what you wanna do. Um, but once I added that in and I clicked upload, now it's giving us back this URL. And now that we have this URL, now we can use that URL to put our file into that URL and it's going to go into Google Cloud Storage. And if I go into the documentation from Google, you can see at the bottom here, they show how to do this using curl. And we can't do this with curl, but we can use fetch to do this in our Next.js application. And luckily that's pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paste this in so you don't have to watch me type it. And to do that, we're going to await and we're going to call fetch and we're going to pass in the URL that we just got back. The method is put, which is very important. The body is the file object from up here. And then headers is the application octet stream. And then once you get back to response, obviously you'll want to handle it however you feel fit for your application. I'm just going to go ahead and log this out just to make sure that it's working correctly. And now let's go test this. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and clear everything out here. I'll choose a new file and I will say upload. There is a URL and it says that the response was okay. So that's good. Let's go into our bucket and see if the file is there. If I refresh here, and there is a file, which means this is working for us. There's one other thing that might happen if you're doing this for the first time, and you might get an error saying that it's not configured for cores correctly. If you do get that, you'll need to configure your bucket in Google Cloud Storage to allow cores from your current computer or the domain that you're gonna be doing this from. I'll put a link down below in the description. Uh, here's a documentation from Google on how to do this. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it through the command line in Google Cloud using this command right here. And the way this works is you create a JSON file in your Google Cloud uh, CLI environment, and then you import that. And they have some configuration samples here. So if you go here, this is what you would want that file to look like. Really quickly, I'll go in and I'll show you how you could do this. I'll also show you how you can use the client libraries to do this directly from your code. You wanna go into the console in Google Cloud and then come up here and activate the Cloud Shell. And the easiest way that I think to do that is then to just go ahead and click Open Editor. And what this is going to do is basically open up VS Code inside of the Cloud Shell. If you click over here for the files, you can see right now nothing's open. I'm just gonna go ahead and say open folder. And then this is the home folder for the current user. In this case, it's me. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And then in here, I'm going to right click and say new file. And I'm just going to call this course.json. And then I'm gonna go over to their example. I'm just going to copy this whole file right here. Put that in there. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You'll want to update this origin to be whatever you need it to be. So if it's your website, or in my case, I'm just going to use localhost because I'm running this locally. So I'm going to copy my localhost and put that in there. You do want to change the method. Uh, you want to also include put. And I'm going to leave the max age seconds as it is. And then you can close that and you can go back into the terminal. And then you want to run this command here with the correct file names and bucket names in it. So I'll go ahead and paste that in here and then update the files and then update the names. Okay, there's mine updated with the correct file names and the correct bucket name. I'll go ahead and run that. If it asks you to authorize, this is just giving it permission to do it. Go ahead and click yes. If you were getting the course error before, that should go away now after adding that information in there. And like I mentioned before, there is also a way to do this using the client library and this is that code. This information will all be in the GitHub link down below. 
But essentially you're just running set course configuration and you're passing in the same information that we just did. You can see out here, I'm just telling it to allow anything for now since it's just a demo. But as far as I can tell, you only have to run this one time, so you don't want to do this before every single call. And I think that's pretty much it for how you upload to Google Cloud using a signed URL. Doing it this way is a great option when you have really large files um, or you just don't want to have your server processing that much data. For example, if you need to upload 10, 20, 30 gigabyte files, you generally don't want to post that whole file to your server and then upload it. You can just let the client do it themselves. I am not a Next.js expert, so if I'm doing something way wrong here, please let me know in the comments down below. I have done some of this stuff before in .NET, but I'm just kind of doing this for fun for a side project. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.